Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 and Me. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are in the world. Uh, I want to thank you for being here, for taking time out of your day to join us and uh, join the conversation and you know just have a, a sense of community here with us women over 60. Got a lot of great things going on and I'm so happy that you've chosen to be a part of it. So thank you again for, for being here. I've got my morning tea today. Today I'm having lemongrass. It's, oops, it's um, a really nice tea, very refreshing and it's very um, good for you. So I hope that you enjoy a cup of tea, coffee, juice, whatever you love, and uh, talk about something today that I think will be of interest to you. But I first of all would like to thank our sponsors, Puritans Pride, for this morning's edition of 60 and Me. Uh, we take a big priority here at 60 and Me with uh, well-being and healthy living. And you can visit Puritans Pride website to find out how the right nutrition can really help you make the most of life in your 60s. So today I do want to talk about something that um, is a passion for me always has been and it seems like it is a passion for some of you too and that is tea. Uh, we have uh, you know lots of choices out there in the world today. It seems like tea is, uh, has become something of a trend but it really has a huge um, history. I mean it goes back thousands of years and it's been used in other cultures uh, as a, a second drink to water. It is more, the most popular drink in the world. When you go to places like China or Japan, you always are offered a cup of tea. And it's just a kind of, you know, it's more than just a drink. And uh, those cultures have been enjoying teas for many, many uh, centuries. So in Tibet, for example, tea is regarded as a sacred offering. And of course, Britain has its afternoon tea which is not to be confused with high tea. Afternoon tea is where you get a tray of beautiful little uh, sandwiches and cakes and, and a tea, normally a dark tea like Earl Grey or, or English breakfast. But um, anyway, that's you know the traditions go all around the world. And I think there's about five reasons that one of our uh, bloggers, Sean Geithner, talks about in terms of why tea is so um, important for bringing people together. It's got that power to, to sort of unite and connect. So the first thing is very simple. It's a great way to relax. You know, it provides us with an opportunity to just have a cup of tea. I've talked about this before that, you know, in the UK, when you're making a decision about something or, you know, you've got something on your mind, it's always like, oh, let's just have a cup of tea and talk it over <laughs> or just let me have a cup of tea. It's just that sense of taking a, taking a moment for yourself. You know, just giving yourself some time and, um, and attention and enjoy something that's really good for you and pleasurable, makes you feel good. And you can get a nice cup or some a beautiful teapot and make it super special. So it's a way to relax with yourself or with friends. Drinking tea is a social event. As I talked about uh, in Japan, there is a fabulous um, practice, the tea ceremony, where you sit down opposite the tea maker and the guest and they go through a very elaborate process of making the tea using uh, very special equipment and little whisks and bowls and um, kettles uh, that create a sensory delight. It's amazing. You sit there and the sounds of the water, the sounds of the stirring, the whisking, it all brings that, you know, they're doing, they're giving you a gift. And that's, I think, what's really, really cool, that it's a social event in that respect. It's, it's something you share with friends. I mean, how many times do you say, if you're in town, give me a call and we'll have a cup of tea? It just says it. <laughs> it says you're my friend. I care about you. It's, uh, you're important to me. So it's just a tool to um, you know, ha practice etiquette and just have, fr have fun with friends. Another thing is tea actually is an afternoon meal. Uh, like I mentioned in Britain, uh, it was actually introduced uh, to the British court, I think, in the 1840s. And um, it's sort of a tradition that you sit down and have an afternoon tea together. It's a, it's a civilized way, in quotes, to, um, to engage uh, an afternoon meal, a snack. And I guess the, the big things are like a cucumber sandwich or um, like salmon or tuna, just um, you know, very nice, healthy foods that you, you make into little sandwiches. And then the cakes, of course, little petite um, cheesecakes or tarts or, you know, whatever um, you've got uh, on the menu that day. If you go to some of the big hotels in places like Burma or the British colonies in India, for example, you'll have afternoon tea that's amazing. I mean, it's really a full, a four course meal, <laughs> but um, a visual delight as well as um, nourishing and good for you. So that's another thing. It's a, it's a meal in itself, 
Have you ever had afternoon tea in a place like the Ritz or you know, just for fun, like going to a nice hotel where they offer afternoon tea? I know in Harrods, for example, in London, uh, probably in lots of places in New York and other cities in the States, they have uh, afternoon tea with scones. You know, with the like the a few, I think you know what a scone is, is that sort of biscuity um, a, a cake. And it's with, you know, strawberry jam or fresh strawberries and whipped cream. Not even whipped cream, it's real cream. It's like English thick cream, super high calorie, but yummy, really, really good. So anyway, an afternoon meal is another way that tea can help bring people together. You know, so I think it's a nice um, thing. And you don't have to make it that fancy. You know, you can just make a couple of really lovely sandwiches, cut the crusts off <laughs> and just enjoy that with a sip of tea. I think the other thing is it's a social, it's a comfort. You know, tea, like I said before, for me, and partly because I have such a British heritage and my tradition is, um, you know, kind of based around tea. Uh, my mom told me that she actually weaned me on tea in my bottle. <laughs> like, you know, after you've drunk the, the milk for a few, for a year or so, then they start putting a little bit of tea in your, in your bottle just to get you used to what is going to be a way of life for you for many, many years. So it, it's, a, it's a comfort. And from, you know, a family perspective, uh, the, fam the person that's offering it will feel better and the person that's receiving it obviously feels special too. I think we've talked about this before at 60 and Me, but I think ritual really plays an important role in our lives in general. And just having a, a tea ritual uh, that gives you that sense of all is well, all is good, you're important to me, I love you, is, is just a great way to enjoy a drink. I think it's um, memories and associations with drinks. And in the States, I know, I must admit this, when I lived in uh, Seattle, I drank a lot of coffee. Uh, Seattle, of course, is the home of Starbucks and uh, there are beautiful um, kind of cafes with their own coffee blends everywhere. So there was a real focus on, on coffee. But I, um, and so I love coffee. And I think in some ways, the ritual around coffee in the United States is about the same um, intensity as coffee or as tea might be in China or Japan. It's just a, let's have a cup of coffee. It's like, sit down, let's share, let's talk, let's comfort each other, whatever you're going through, have a cup of coffee or tea. But tea for me, I think, um, is worldwide more of a, of a comfort drink. And like I said before, we've talked about this, is there's more than one kind of tea, obviously. There's all kinds of black teas. Um, there's, Sean actually writes another article about this, about black tea, which uh, you can read. But there's blacks, all kinds of green teas. Uh, there's, you know, just blends, mixes now that are being created with spices and herbs, uh, the Ayurvedic chais, uh, tea from other countries. And also you've got um, herbal infusions now that are made with herbs. And um, so there's a tea is like a, a, an abund there's an abundance of information and choices around tea. It's a simple, and I think it's a mysterious drink. I think it's just got a magic to it. And I love my tea. And um, it brings people together in the ways that I've talked about here. And it gives you time for yourself too. It's a special gift to you. So it's a friend in itself. Tea can be your best friend sometimes when you're going through a tough time. And I know some of us are, and I really do. My heart goes out to all of you out there that are listening with something on your mind and um, maybe a challenging situation in your life. And just take care of yourself. You know, be well. Go and do something good for yourself today. Make yourself a cup of tea and stop doing everything else. Just grab your cup, sit, put it in your hands and drink it one sip at a time. Just breathe. I mean, I just think for me, tea is my soothing, uh, my soothing drink. Bedtime, lunchtime, anytime. So I hope you've enjoyed this chat about tea. I'd love to hear your stories. You know, what kind, what are your favorite kinds of tea? And what special memories um, have you got associated with tea in your life? Leave your comments in the section below. It'd be great to chat with you about it and hear your, your, you know, your comments and your feedback. And uh, have a wonderful day. Have a great cup of tea and take very good care. And we'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye for now, everyone.